we could talk about your first wave today. My first wave was the, yeah, it was a, <laughs> what we were at, uh, what was that secret spot called again? It is a, we will not name it. You can't name it. Basically a right sandbar, mm -hmm. kind of like, almost like a point break, but a sand bottom. Right. Um, and shoulder high. So, but I'm paddling out. You paddled out first. I'm paddling out. And the freaking within two minutes of being, of paddling out, the wave that we had seen from the beach, which is why we chose to surf there, comes straight to you. And I'm like, oh, Matt's got a chance here. It looks like it's going to be a pretty fun day because we're going to get a bunch of these. Turns out that was the only one. That well, came. that was, but, yeah, that's a But you spun. And I know you haven't surfed in a fair bit. And it, for the last few years, you haven't been surfing for a while. So I'm like, I don't expect anything of you. But you just spun, casually get to your feet, cruise down the line, crack, like, I don't know if you cracked it, but you definitely like got in a little comfortable turn or two, yeah. just boom, maybe floated a section or two, cruise, perfect style, perfectly ridden, that board couldn't do more than what you made it do. Nailed it. I think that uh, if you- um, Still got it. There's, there's a certain, there's a certain uh, uh, core level of, of, that I learned that I think that I would be able to do even if I was so, sort of like 90, and if, if you could just prop me up, yeah, I could just sort the of problem. do it. Yeah. The hard part for me, you know, like all the things we've said, I, I don't have much stamina anymore. I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a fourth or fifth gear when I paddle anymore. Right. You know, it, but, but there's a certain, like, like if I redo, if I forget about really trying to go hard off the top or if I forget about any kind of like trying to do anything too reboundy with anything, like if I'm just doing the, the basic slide up and down that tuck back knee, I think I can do that until, um, until the, you know, I, I slip, I slip my coil. Well, the thing that everybody who's aging and I ask how they continue surfing. The pop-up. The pop-up is what gets them. Pop-up is, I didn't go on two waves today because I knew I was just going to poke it if I tried, you know, I, you, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know why it should be. I mean, if I, if I drop down here on the floor right now, I feel like I can pop up fine. But when I'm, you know. I, it's confidence. I think it is confidence. If so, honestly, you should get down on the floor, not here, but on your own time and continue to practice that when you're not surfing. And that's what wave key is, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know Brad calls me about that and I should, I should give him more time. I just, I, I don't, I actually, the thing is, David, I don't want to care anymore about it. I just want like, so today I wasn't going to come to this. You said I was supposed to go see somebody else for uh, lunch and that got pushed back till tomorrow. So I thought, oh, I'm going to take David up on this invite and go surf, but I didn't think it was going to be that fun. So I just like this, that wave I got, that just sort of fell out of the sky on me. But I don't want to have to be thinking ahead and planning and like, uh, I don't want to try anymore. Like that, that came to me, like it was a gift. It came to me, I'll take it, thanks. I can still do it, great. But you know, that all, the, all those years when I surfed all the time, gosh, it was, um, it was like, uh, you know, it was just being, on, it was sort of on that mission that you're on and it's, con it, it was, I was never not thinking about what's the next trip. What's, where do I go? I, I don't, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think anymore at all about how well I'm surfing. I understand that. You part. Know, so, but, but will today's session, um, doesn't it invigorate you and kind of no, re no, reset? It, it, it invigorate. It reminds me of how much, um, how much I love, and I'm going to use the word past tense, like how much I loved surfing and how much it meant to me for the, I started when I was eight and I kind of stopped when I was 50. I didn't stop, I just stopped being surfing all the time. But that period, like that whole long, complicated, just crazed, obsessive period, like how much, I hated a lot of it. I got really frustrated a lot of it, and especially the last eight or 10 years of it, I was just going, why am I still doing this? But for a long period, for 30 years, when it was the love of my life, when I have a wave like that today, I go, oh, that was why it was the love of my life. That was why I did it. You know, and again, I didn't do anything in that wave today. It just reminded me how good it feels to catch a wave and 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 ride it and feel like uh, the, the motion itself felt good. And and um, God, it just goes before that because before I even surf, when my uncle Daniel pushed me across the pool in in Tarzana when I was five or six and I stood up on his board and glided across the pool. I go, wow, this is, this is the best. This is the great. I want to do this. We moved to Venice a year or two later and, you know, then skip ahead 
45 years and I was fine. And then I finally set it down. But I, that's how long it, and I, I said, you know, for the last 10 years, since we moved to Seattle, 11 years, a lot of that time uh, I spend going over all that and wondering, God, what, that was, that was something that was, and then I have a, and then I, re, I need to remind myself. And that's what happened today. It reminded me of why, why I did it. It doesn't make me want to go out and um, chase it down anymore. So you and I are 20 years age difference yeah. approximately. Yeah. Um, I surfed earlier this week uh, for the first time in a month. And yeah, it, you, have a, you have a newborn, so. Yeah. And um, I have a bunch of reasons for why I didn't surf that month, but it was the longest, probably the longest stretch of time I've gone without surfing really ever. Right. And that session, I actually forced it. It was like, I have work to do. I should be going into the office, but I need this for just self-care, you know? And so how long I, had it been before that? A month. You? Okay. A month. Right, right. Uh, so I went and it was just such a good, re first of all, the waves were super fun. Kind of like today, nobody right, out, right. great conditions, got a bunch of good ones though, unlike today. And it was a reset of, I just, a smile was on my face. Right. It's all the cliches. Right. And I, and I just thought, this is uh, David. This is who right, I right, am. Right, right, You came back to yourself. All the rest of that month, I was just faking it, to be perfectly honest. Right. And the farther I got away, the harder it was to fake it. Right. And I can be kind and I can kind of have the same kind of worldview and all this stuff. But honestly, surfing is what sets all of those things right. for me. I need the exercise first right. of all, but in a, and it wasn't that I shredded a wave or anything no, like no, that. No, it I, was more just like being in the ocean and getting a little exercise and getting the sun and all that sort of stuff that goes with it. Um, so I, I hear you, what you're saying and it, I'm afraid to think that, but that one month will become norm and then it becomes two months and then you don't even, it sounds like you don't even identify. Cause like when I say, I feel like David again. It's because David identifies as a surfer with right. all of these worldviews. That's views. the word. I wanted to bring the word identity in here. And you're still at a point where I, I didn't, I can't imagine. I cannot, when I was 40, I couldn't have imagined not doing it with the degree of like, with that ferociousness and that intent. I never, at 40, I thought I'll never not, it was inconceivable to me that there would come a time when I wasn't doing it at that point. In the next 10 years, it just started getting to be sort of diminished returns because to maintain that yeah. focus. But the thing that, so when you just made this face, like, oh, and, and I've said the same <laughs> thing to other people who are still in that where I used to be. And the thing that you have to remember is that if, is that if uh, it still felt that way to me, I'd still be doing it. So what, in other words, when I, when I stopped, it was just pushing away from something where I felt like I've had enough. Like it didn't, so it didn't feel like I was... Um, it no longer. It didn't feel like I'd lost something. I didn't. And look, you see, look, you look. Can you, can the, well, can anyone see how skeptical? You, like, do I, we got yeah, a camera? Yeah, there's a camera. Because you you look skeptical. Yeah, and well, I think well, it's because with, is it because you weren't putting yourself in good waves? Were you just surf, like you were surfing shitty waves? Not and at all. Conditions? No, it, it had to do with like I go God. Uh, so so okay. it would be different for different people. But for me, it was I had a kid at 49. Um, I I was starting at 49 to. Um, either lose a step or at very best I was, I would plateaued. I wasn't getting any better. I wasn't developing. And I really didn't want to put in the hours in crummy surf, uh, to, to, to keep my level where it was. So like for me, like stay, being good, good at it was really important. And when I could see that that was going to, not just good at it, but like improving was really important. And when I could see that that wasn't going to be the case, it just became really frustrating. Uh, and so I was an unpleasant person to surf with for the last, you know, like five years where I like from 45 to 50 or whatever. I, I, I mean, I still had, I was still, I still had great moments. There was always the bull. I, I could hit the bullseye now and then, but God, I had more and more times where I was out there just going, why am I still doing this? And da, da, da. And it was just harder to justify it. It was, it's a lot of time, man. It was just so much time putting into it. And I started resenting how much time it would take. And I also thought, God, it, you know, at this age, like maybe there's, I should try something else. You know, I should, and it, it turned out to be that mostly what I wanted to do was just work on encyclopedia of surfing, which seems like not much of a 
breakaway, but but by not surfing all the time, I had so much more time to put into this project that I wanted to work on. I also needed to um, be better at being a dad and a husband. I wasn't a failure at it, but I knew I could do better if I wasn't surfing all the time. Yeah, you know, up until 48, 49, I was still doing, telling those bullshitty kind of like little lies and, you know, coming home later than I promised I'd come home. And um, I just, you know, I, I wanted to do better at that part of it. Yeah. So, so, but, so, it's, it, uh, so I think our, the way that we treated it in our obsession of it was a little bit different. Because I don't, I don't know that I was you as yeah, no, I, as you. Were. I went no, few. And so, so me now distancing myself, for, uh, like I feel like I could find a happy medium. Like I uh, derive tremendous pleasure from my uh, relationship with Lauren and my relationship with Austin. Like those are more important to me than surfing by far. And I knew that prior to even getting in those relationships, I knew that was my life plan. Right. And so as those came, I quickly put surfing aside. But when I revisit surfing, I right. realize how much it informs me and makes me just better at those things but too. My experience has nothing, your experience, you're going to, you're going to find your own, uh, uh, way of layering all those things together. And you already, so there's like, whatever, uh, whatever I'm saying to you, this is not a thing that you're facing down yourself. You may end up surfing, um, three times a week until, until the end. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not, so I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, but I'm I, not a temp, my thing is not a template for anybody else. Of course, but I have to God, ask I mean, and engage you're, and, you're, you're, and assess and all right, that sort all right, of stuff. Right. Um, but I guess what I want to say is if you, if you, if you, if you do get to a place where you, you're thinking about, I don't want to do this at this level anymore. Don't then, feel bad about it. Don't feel bad. Like I, you know, I, again, I have so, I have friends who are my age who are still surfing all the time and they and i was the most i was the most frothiest hardcore out right. of all those guys and right. so when i went to the other side it was like i'd been kidnapped for them and they they were you know they they still can't figure it out like and, and all i say to them is like you know it, uh it wasn't but it, it, it wasn't exactly like i hit a switch when jody got the job at, when we moved out of san francisco to seattle when i was 51 and that was that was the mark that was the point where it turned you know there were a few months in Seattle where I was bitter about it. I was resentful. I wanted to keep surfing a lot. I brought up, I, I brought up boards with me and da, da, da. But I pretty quickly thought this is actually the, this is the off ramp that I've kind of been looking for, even if I didn't know I was looking for it. And I let it go. And it was, it was, it felt great. Mm. And it, it didn't, I didn't need to feel like I had to be surfing and I, I didn't. And so when I say like today came to me, I, if I don't chase it, if it lands, it's like, you know, butterfly lands on my shoulder look at that look at that beautiful butterfly i'm so stoked thank you um and wait not, for the next wait for the next butterfly, yeah not you know? setting up a butterfly sanctuary right. in the back but a, lot, a lot of times what i do you know what what i really want to do uh what i miss and this is i i put this in a separate category is like i i don't really want to i don't want to i don't plan on going surfing on a board I really would love to just go body surf two or three waves a day in warm water. I would just, I want to, I would, what I don't like about Seattle is I'm not next to a place where I can just get in the ocean. So if I, I grew up in Manhattan beach yeah. <clears throat> and like I leave my brother's house, jog 20 minutes to the beach over the hill across PCH. And if the water's warm and I can just jump in and ride three shore break waves, get a little tiny shore break tube and then get sp spun around and there's feel like, that means a lot to me. That actually means more to me than, than tucking the knee and riding a wave to prove that I can still surf. Totally agree. And that's a consensus among so many people that I interview. Just being in the ocean, right? And, and body surfing specifically. Right. Which, like which, they almost, you get elevated to a point where you don't need a board. Like the board is actually a distraction between you and the ocean. Yeah, I mean, it started off in the ocean, right? I, we, when we moved to Venice when I was six or seven, we, you know, we... My brother and I body surfed for a couple of years. That's what we did for first. And, and and I'm not saying there's some kind of cosmic full circle thing that's happened, but the rush that I felt at seven or eight, and it's not even riding waves. It's just getting tumbled, and it's just going from 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 beach to water, and then jumping over waves, jumping under waves, and then occasionally riding a wave, and then being slightly out of control when you wipe out and popping back up and swimming back, swimming back out and doing it, and not giving it doesn't matter at all how like Bill Edwards once said something about how like the first 
you know, the, the first day you surf is the best day because on the second day you're trying to do better. And, so true. And by the, Man, that's, he was smart. Right. And it wasn't, and I, I, I don't for a minute resent that I spent all those years trying to get better. It was really fun. It was like playing, like my son, the way he plays games, he's always going to go to the next level. I loved going to the next level, next level high. How high can I keep going? But it's, it, it's a, it takes a lot out of you to do it, you know? And I, and, and, and I, at 51, I was definitely, I was, I was probably done at 45 wanting to keep getting better at it. it I'll never be done wanting to go in the ocean. Yeah, that's a great point. Summed it up. 